polar coordinates. We're, we're going to be looking at polar coordinates right now, and polar coordinates offer us a, a very interesting way of defining um, a graph. And so what polar coordinates look at is um, length of a radius and the radius coming from the origin. So the length of radius from the origin And it also looks at the angle at which that radius is going out. So the angle of the radius. And we talk about polar coordinates, r is radius, uh, and theta is that angle. Um, okay, so as I said, polar coordinates allow us to, to draw some really cool graphs. Uh, here's one of them right here. Um, which is defined by 1 plus 2 cos theta. And we're going to be looking at polar coordinates and, and how to get the graphs uh, in this lesson. So first off, um, like I said, uh, polar coordinates, um, some polar coordinate r comma theta tells us both the length of some radius, r, and the angle theta that's measured from sort of the typical starting point of the polar axis, um, you know, from zero going out to zero degrees or two pi, zero or two pi radian. Uh, so that's, that's how we, that's how we uh, look at a polar coordinate. Uh, so just as a quick test, what would, what would this look like? One comma pi over four. So take a second to think about what that, would look like try to draw it on a scratch paper piece of paper. Um, so what that would look like is having uh, going out at an angle of pi over four, and going out for a length of one. Where this is the angle pi over 4. So that's that's what a polar coordinate does. Uh, it, it positions you at some uh, at some length of a radius given some angle of departure from the positive x-axis. All right, so, so there's some really important relationships that we need to look at, uh, starting with um, you know, if we have, if this is the point r theta, uh, where this distance here is r, and the angle theta is shown as given, um, using what we know about trig, we could write that our y value, if we wanted to put it in terms of x and y, that our y value is just r sine theta, and our x value is r cos theta, uh, using a trig identity, or, you know, trig understanding. So therefore, um, you know, x, y in in regular rectangular coordinates are r cosine theta, that's the x, and r sine theta, which is the y. Well, what relationship can we get between them? A very important one. Uh, the important relationship that we see, uh, or that you might see, if we, if we square both sides, um, we get x squared equals r squared cos squared theta, and y squared equals r squared sine squared theta. And if we add those two together, um, add the top equation to the bottom equation, we get x squared plus y squared equals, factoring out an r squared since they share it, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. So there, um, and we know that cos squared plus sine squared is just one, so we get that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And this is just the Pythagorean theorem here. x squared plus y squared equals the r squared. Well, what about what about this relationship y over x? This this terms this turns out to be a pretty useful one. Uh, if we if we think about that, um, well y is r sine theta and x is r cos theta, 
So our expression y over x, uh, when we simplify the r's, equals tangent of theta. So we're going to be using uh, both of these relationships, both um, y over x and the idea of x squared plus y squared equals r squared throughout this um, lesson. Okay, so it says find the polar coordinates of the point with the Cartesian coordinates as given. So let's start off by plotting that point. You know, it's negative 2 and then up 2 root 3. So yeah, somewhere up here. So that's going to be this point there. And we need to know, you know, what are the polar coordinates of that point? So to find the polar coordinates, what we're looking for is the value of this r and the value of that theta. So to find r, um, to find r, we know that r squared is just x squared plus y squared. And simplifying this, um, we get 4 plus 12 square root it to find r, and we get r equals 4. So we know that r equals 4. And to find theta, we know that tangent of theta equals y over x. So we know that theta equals arctan of negative root 3. Well, arctan of negative root 3 uh, ends up being negative pi over 3. Let's just confirm that that's true. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's true. But just to show that it's true, uh, we could do tan of negative pi over 3. Making sure that my mode is right. And I should get negative root 3. And that is negative root 3. So that's good. Um, but but the negative root 3, that angle negative root 3 is, let's see, this is the angle negative root 3 down here. That's negative root 3. So what is this angle? Well, that angle is pi over 2 sorry let's say that even better <laughs> that angle is pi minus pi over 3 So therefore, we found both our theta um, and we found r. And maybe we'll simplify theta just a little bit. Um, that's 2 pi over 3. So in terms of r and theta, what we have is 4 comma 2 pi over 3. So that tells us that we're we're at a length of four and at an, at an angle of two pi over three. Okay, so next it says sketch a graph of the points with polar coordinates r equals two cosine theta. Now this is um, at first a, a slightly tricky idea, but um, I think the easiest thing to do is just to generate a table of theta and r. Um, and I think it's easy to, to just increment by pi over threes because or pi over sixes because we know those. So you know theta, pi over six, pi over three, 
pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6. So this is really sort of challenging us to recall our um, unit circle, and, 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 and you must. So our r value uh, here, 2 cos of 0 equals 1. 2 cos of pi over 6 equals root 3. Yep. This is going to equal 1, 0, negative 1. And you can go and, and fill this chart all out. Negative 2, negative root sorry, negative root 3 and negative 2. So we can go fill this chart out, and, and let's uh, just skip to the next slide because I think there's no point in going through all of this. Well, actually, before we get to the next slide, um, plotting these points so that you can sort of see what we're talking about. Um, the first point, that should have been a 2. Uh, 0, 2 means at an angle of 0. So in this, let's get another marker going at an angle of this direction, we're at a length of 2. And then going at an angle of pi over 6, so that's kind of like going out at this angle. I'm going to draw a circle here of radius 2. It's going to help me. And here's a circle of radius 1, roughly. So at an angle of 0, I was at 2. At an, an angle of pi over 6, which is like this, I'm at a distance between root 3, so that's like right around there. And at pi over 3, I'm at a radius of 1, so that lines me up right on here. Uh, at pi over 2, I'm at 0. At 2 pi over 3, so that's like going at an angle like this, I'm at negative 1. So negative 1 means an r in the in the negative direction is the opposite direction so that's down here and at 5 pi over 6 that's this angle i'm at an angle of negative root 3 so that's going in the negative direction negative root 3 and at pi at an angle pi so here's an angle pi i'm at negative 2 so that brings me back here and so what it looks like is i start i'm generating points kind of like on a circle and if we Look at the next slide, um, and, and we fill out all of these points and follow the same thing. We do, in fact, generate an equation for a circle. So this describes a circle with center at the point um, 1, comma 0. Let's look at another problem. Before we do, though, uh, tests for symmetry, and this th these are important things for us to kind of consider, and, and we need to think about sine and cosine in this. Uh, something is symmetric about the origin if the following is true. If negative r th comma theta equals r comma theta. So in other words, if you put in r or negative r, you get the same value back. The second test, uh, symmetric about the x-axis, if we put a, you know, an angle theta and a negative theta, you get the same r back. I think a nice example there is like cos of pi over 4 and cos of negative pi over 4, both equal root 2 over 2. And then this third test here, um, the third test is saying that if you switch pi, pi minus theta and theta, you're going to get the same r value back. And I think a good example of that, um, and that creates, creates symmetry around the y-axis, a good example of that I think is sine. 
So, you know, if I have sine of pi over 6, that's going to equal sine of pi minus pi over 6. Both of those equal 1 half. So we can use these symmetries to, to help us uh, shorthand graphs. And let's look at that here. So we we have the graph, the polar curve, r equals 1 minus cos theta, and we want to use symmetry. So we know that um, because we're dealing with cosine of theta, uh, if I go back a slide, dealing with cosine of theta, we're going to get symmetry around the x-axis. So we're going to use some symmetry here. To do this problem, uh, same really as the last one in terms of the idea, we've, we're going to get thetas and r's. Uh, let's increment by pi over sixes, and we'll go. We'll just do a couple of them um, just to get us started. Two pi over three. So we know that cos of zero. Uh, is 1, so 1 minus 1 will get us 0. For pi over 6, we have 1 minus root 3 over 2, which is something, small number. Um, for pi over 3, we're going to get 1 minus 1 half. For pi over 2, uh, we're going to get 1 minus 0 which is 1, and for 2 pi over 3, we get 1 minus negative 1 half, which equals 1.5. And to, to continue filling out this chart, let's just kind of look ahead to the next page. Um, you know, we got up to here. If you keep going, you get something like this. And if you sketch each of these points, um, so thinking about what they mean, you know, we've got the radius of, here's a circle with radius 1, and here's a circle of radius 2. And if I go out at an angle of 0, that's in this direction, I have a radius of 1. And when I go out at a radius or an angle of pi over 6, that's an angle that looks something like that. Um, I've got this really small value, 0.13, so that's why you see it right there. Uh, angle of pi over 3, that's this line here, pi over 3. I have a radius of 1 half, so it's right there. Um, and an angle of pi over 2, that's this angle. I go out at the length of 1, so that puts me right on the circle. Um, and if you go out and you fill out all these points at the appropriate theta and appropriate r, we get this shape. Um, let's see if this can come out neatly. It looks something like that. And it's called a cartoid. Um, and it's it's a Greek word meaning heart. And, and the Greeks were, were famous mathematicians, and they did a lot of work with the polar coordinates, and they named a lot of these beautiful shapes. So that's that's a shape that you must become familiar with. It's called a cartoid. Um, using a graphing calculator to do this, to graph this following function, uh, really simple. So just same with parametric equations. We need to go to our mode and, and turn it into polar. So polar mode. And then when you graph it, so we're graphing 1 minus cosine theta. Theta is just the x button. Uh, and then the only thing you need to do to be careful of is you go to your window. And what it says is um, I'm looking at an angle from theta or from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, and then the theta step is how, how, how many increments of theta you're going to do. And so I'll just do theta divided by 30. So I'm incrementing every pi 30 radians. I'm going to get a data point. Uh, leave my x values and y values the same and graph it. And we get this cartoid shape. 
Um, that's it. That is all there is for uh, this introduction to polar coordinates. Hope that you find uh, this interesting as you start looking at graphs and how to graph polar coordinates. Um, you, you get some really cool and beautiful graphs. And I'll just leave us here at the cartoid, the heart. Okay, that's it. Bye.